Hello, and welcome to this introduction of a Wingo 3.6. I'm Arnaud. And I'm Kurt. And we're very excited to, uh, to talk you through the novelties of a Wingo 3.6. So let, let's jump into the, uh, into the subject and let's go through the, uh, the, the summary of scoping of a Wingo 3.6. And as the slide shows, uh, a Wingo 3.6 is really built out of five different components. Uh, first one really is foundational. We've done a lot of work to enhance the foundations and this is very diverse uh, in terms of uh, uh, the, the functionalities that are below this. Uh, for starters, we've worked on the application session streaming and really simplifying this for the end user. Uh, secondly, we've added the capability to limit uh, the number of times an application can be opened to one single time, which is very interesting if, for example, you, this application is Outlook. Um, Thirdly, uh, we've heavily invested on the copy-paste uh, experience from your desktop environment to your browser, within the Awingu environment, all, but also from the Awingu browser-based environment to your desktop. Uh, second big building block is really facilitating the coexistence of Citrix and Awingu. Really the use case there is customers running on older versions of Citrix that want to tap into uh, the full potential of, uh, of Awingu being browser-based working, which is highly mobile working, but also the session recording, the session auditing, the, the collaboration functionalities, etc. So really what we've done there is uh, we, we provide and we support a number of blueprints that are extremely easy to set up independent of what version of Citrix you're running today. Three is an integration with Skype for Business. Uh, as you know, we've already had session sharing and file sharing capabilities. We've built on top of this, and this is where the integration with Skype for Business will land. And we're gonna show a demo, or Kurt is going to show the demo uh, uh, later in this, uh, in this screencast. And it's actually really exciting because it's really easy to use. Four is we've, as you know, uh, we, it, our, our partner channel is built out of service providers and, uh, uh, and ISVs, software vendors. Um, and we've, we've invested in enabling these uh, partner uh, profiles to enhance their, their own value proposition and really blend this in, in into what a Wingu is doing. And this you'll, you'll see this on a number of layers. For example, we've reinvested on the APIs, really making it a lot easier to integrate with a Wingu's API, also making sure that the documentation is fully up to date, etc. Secondly, uh, enhance the number of customization capabilities. Um, it goes from really small details, but these, the, these partners request this degree of, of, of detail. And so we've, we've We've worked heavily on this, and Kurt is going to demo those as well. And three um, is the ability to do in-app downloading. Um, it might not be required for everyone, and this is why this, this functionality is also available on demand today. Uh, if you're interested in this feature, you can just uh, reach out to us through sales.awingo.com, and we can enable this for you. And what it comes down to is that from within your published application, you can immediately download uh, a file maybe it's, uh, it's an Excel file or a CSV file from your browser based, uh, from the application running in your browser to your local desktop uh, experience. Five, we've built on security and compliance enhancing features. And this is, this is an item that you've seen recurringly uh, in, our, uh, in our product releases. And we keep investing into this because this is so important for customers to you know, enhance the security level, enhance the compliance level. And what we're specifically adding here is an optional 30-day browser, 30-day browser trust uh, for multi-factor authentication. And once again, this is something that that Gust is going to show in uh, in the live demo. Okay, uh, let's start with the new ca customization capabilities in 3.6. I'm moving over to the uh, running uh, configuration in the system management console, and. You can see that next to the, the primary color we already had, uh, we added the secondary color. Uh, the primary color is the base color, which was also available in the previous releases, uh, which sets the background color and the color of the palette polygon. Sorry. Uh, the secondary color uh, is a new uh, configurable color, which is used for uh, the menu on top of the workspace and also the uh, highlighting and the folders um, icons in the files page. Uh, let's check his colors. So 
So here you can see that uh, the primary color is still used for the background and the secondary color is, uh, so is used for the menu on top, uh, the button on top and also for the folders and the highlighting uh, of the folders in the files page. Um, sometimes uh, the polygon background is uh, not what you want, so we also added the option to uh, use a plain color as a background. As a result, you have a flat background without any polygon uh, in the background. Uh, another thing we added is next to the logo, you can also select the fav icon. The fav icon is uh, the little icon on the top of your browser or the top of your window, um, which is also used if you create a bookmark or a shortcut on your desktop. So let's change the fav icon from polygon to custom. If now it will use the Meerkat uh, image as my fav icon. And it, looks, here. It, it looks like a really small thing, but actually it's really useful. Because if you think of ISVs uh, that publish their software through a Wingu or service providers that build a workplace offering, they will really be able to brand uh, their solution uh, towards their end customers. And we really make it visible as well in the browser. So it's, it's a small feature, but it's actually very valuable. Yes. Indeed. Okay, let's have a look now at the more foundational changes uh, we did in the 3.6 release. Um, here I log in with a regular user. Uh, this environment is uh, configured to use MFA using Azure MFA. And you see here that the trust this device option is enabled by the administrator. This option uh, allows me to, uh, if I successfully log in, to trust this browser uh, for the coming 30 days uh, so that I don't have to use MFA all the time again. Uh, after these 30 days I will have to uh, reuse my MFA uh, application uh, again uh, and I can choose to re-enable the 30 days uh, trust or not. Uh, let's enable this. Um. The fact that this is enabled for this user has been opened by the administrator, right? It's not yes, a default yeah, setting. Yes, yes, it's not a default setting. It's something that you have to set explicitly in the user connect. Exactly. Okay. Um, so let's have a look at the applications. And um, in some applications, sometimes if you use an application, you will uh, use another application or launch another application um, from that uh, first application. An example here is you use Outlook uh, within a Wingu and you have an ex uh, attachment, an Excel file. You click on the Excel file and you will open Excel in the same session. Uh, I can have the same situation in WordPad. For instance, I want to add a nice drawing to my document um, and it will open Paint that allows me to create a new uh, drawing. So let's draw something. Um, before, uh, the only option to switch between these applications was to go uh, through the polygon and the triple dots and here you see that I have two applications open in the same session and I can switch between these applications. Uh, now we uh, facilitated this by uh, adding this application in the active sessions page as well. So these two applications are in the same session but I, I can see them as two different sessions. So this allows me to uh, switch easily between these applications as if these were two different sessions. Um, another thing we added on the stream applications is uh, the option to only have one instance uh, of a specific application for the user. Uh, same use case here is uh, Outlook. So let's launch Explorer. Go to the desktop. Um, before, if I opened Explorer again, I would just have a second session. Now, if I open Explorer, I will go to the same session again. Uh, typical use case here is, is Outlook. Um, as I know mentions, we uh, now integrate with uh, Skype for Business for all our sharing capabilities. So both files and applications can be shared using Skype for Business. Um, I will share a file. And here I have the same options as before. 
So basically, I can give the share a name and some description, description which allows me uh, to provide some extra data uh, to see why I share this file or with whom I share this file. I can add an expiration date uh, until when this share will be available for the users. Um, and I can choose if I want to share this document in a preview mode, being as a PDF or as downloads. Um, in this case, I want to, the users to be able to download the PowerPoint presentation and I want all users with the URL to be able to download this file. Uh, you can still use the URL and send it to anyone uh, you want to share the document with, but now you can also share with all your uh, Skype for Business contacts. If I share using this uh, Skype for Business functionality, uh, the, user, the user will receive a message uh, on his Skype for Business account uh, with the link uh, to download the document. Yeah, I think that's very easy. Eh? It makes life for the, uh, for the end user even easier than, uh, than before. Yes. This concludes the demo. All right, thank you, Kurt. Uh, I hope you guys liked it. Uh, more information is available on www.awingo.com. And if you have any suggestions on features or any questions about features, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to us through product.awingo.com.